Hello guys, welcome to Hankins Custom Rifles and another episode of Hanks TV. We're going to start doing some videos of the machining of the parts here at Hankins Custom Rifles. I machine and manufacture a lot of my own parts, if not all of my own parts. As far as my small parts go, I machine all those here in the shop from start to finish. Uh, heat treating, we do all that right here in the shop. So I'm going to start doing some videos on the CNC manufacturing and machining of some of my parts. And as we get into new parts and other things, we might do a little heat treat segment, um, machining of the muzzle brakes and all that stuff that we do here. So I'm going to start adding some different types of videos to my YouTube channel. So if you're not a big fan of shooting guns and that kind of stuff and watching me test fire all my rifles, but you do like machining and manufacturing of different things, you might want to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I will be adding a lot of CNC type stuff to the YouTube channel. Some of it I might go into detail on how I'm doing things, program writing, stuff like that. Some of it's just going to be as simple. Let's show you how we do it here at Hankins Custom Rifles. And um, it just depends on how it goes with the YouTube channel to how many of these videos I'll be posted and what we're going to do in the future. But in today's video I'm going to show you how I machine my primer modules that I use in my Hankins ignition system. So we're going to just start out with a piece of brass. This is a 5 8 diameter brass rod. It's 360 yellow brass. I buy these in 12 foot lengths. And when I set the machine up to run the primer modules, I'll buy 24 of these bars and I cut them. They're 12 foot long, so I cut them three feet long and that will give me 96 pieces of brass to run through this machine and I just cut them on a little bandsaw and to three feet bring them over to the deburr machine knock off a deburr on the edge and I can load them into my spindle and I'm going to go through that show you how we do all that here so I have to move the camera around at different angles but I'm going to show you each step and how we make these uh, primer modules which right now I'm running the primer modules for the brake action conversions in the 4570 case heads. This is the module that I use for my 4570 um, conversions, all the brake action conversions, all the Encore uh, custom Brux barrels get these modules right here. So this is the first operation. I'm going to show you how we do that. So come along with me and uh, I'll show you how we load this bar in there first. Okay guys, we're around here on the CNC machine. We're at the outboard end of the spindle. Now, I took the door off here so that I could get the camera in a good position and show you what's going on. We take this bar brass, it's just 5 8 diameter brass, and I've got a series of guide bushings that I have put into the spindle to hold this bar from flying around. A lot of you guys know if you've got a lathe at home, you can't let a big long bar stick out the end of the lathe with no support because it'll get to flying around and vibrating and it can bend. I've seen these things turn into um, L shapes, looks like a hex wrench on the end of the machine and they can vibrate so bad that it'll move the machine, vibrate it off its pads or whatever. But we got a series of guide bushings. There's like four guide bushings in this, in this shaft right here, in the spindle. And they're machined to fit. So I'm running 5 8 right now. I've got 5 8 guide bushings in here. If I run half inch, I'm going to take the 5 8 out and put half inch guide bushings in. We go up to 3 quarters, we go to 3 quarter guide bushings. You got to have it sitting in there so that this piece that you've got sticking out the end of your tailstock won't go flying all over the place. Now I cut these at 3 feet so that I've only got about 6 inches sticking out. You can't let 18 inches or 24 inches stick out your spindle because the momentum on that would just start to twirl that thing to the point it would just take off and go crazy on you so as a rule of thumb I don't ever like to let more than six or eight inches of material sticking out the tailstock the bigger it is the more you can get by with sticking out but the smaller the diameter the shorter you got to have right here so a couple of inches six or eight on this material we're in good shape 
And another thing, the faster you run your machine, the less you want sticking out because it just multiplies the vibrations or the momentum or whatever you want to call it. And it will cause your material to spin in an oval shape. So that's not a good thing. You never want that to happen. So you want to make a series of guide bushings and put them in your spindle to hold your material from moving around. Now we're going to go back to the front side of the machine and I'll show you the chuck end and how we set this material length. Okay, we're down here at the chuck side of the spindle now and I've got my carriage pushed down out of the way so that you guys can see what I'm doing in here. And I'm going to try to stay out of the frame of the camera and not block your view, but I don't know that that'll be 100% possible. But anyway, I've got this little tool here. It's just a stop that you can buy. It's adjustable. So depending on what material you're running to where you set these stops at, and it's real easy to set your material to length. Once you get this stop set, you calibrate all your tools to the length and it's just one, two, three, one, two, three. You can just go over and over again. So this is a five seat collet. I got a hand closure on it so I've got it in the open position and we're just going to put this part setter right here I'll try to do it upside down so you can see you slide that in and then you'll slide this in the collet until you bottom out and then you tighten the handle the handle is down here you can see that in the outside of the frame it's all the way down at the far end of the machine this is your collet closer, so you push it to close it and pull it to open it. Works pretty simple. So now I can rotate my Z axis handle, and this will bring my carriage up into the work position. Now I like to leave my starting position back far enough so that I can get in here and reset my next part. My tool change position is real close to the part so it doesn't have to move back and forth so much in the z-axis and waste a lot of cycle time moving in and out. So we've got it set. We're ready to start running the machine now. The, the, the program is already in the machine and in order to get the machine to start you just come up here to the controls and we're going to push this green button. So when I push that, you'll hear a little beep sound and then the machine will start to work. And I'm going to move you in for a better view of the machine part. Okay, just for a, a quick look at my tool setup so that you guys understand what's going on during the machining process. We've got a series of tools. I've got five tools set up on my carriage and it's set up kind of like a Swiss style or a gang lathe, whatever you want to call those. But it's not exactly a Swiss machine and it's not a gang machine. This is just a standard tool room lathe that I've kind of modified to fit my purpose for making this part. And it greatly picks up and speeds up my process for making these things years and years ago, 10 years ago or so, before I had this machine, I had to actually machine these modules on a manual machine. And it would literally take all day to make enough modules to build one gun. And I knew there was no way I could keep up with the demand even back then at making these modules. And you can't consistently make every module the same from one batch to the next batch. So one batch of modules for George ain't the same batch of modules I made for Jim that ain't the same that I made for Jerry down the road so they're always different and it was just almost impossible to keep up with the supply that I needed to manufacture so I bought this machine years ago and it's paid off for me it's without this machine I wouldn't be where I'm at right now in the Hankins Custom Rifles building the smokeless muzzle loaders. This machine right here is what put me, so to speak, on the map. But let's get on with what I've got what I've got set up here. This first tool right here, and you can't see the very end of it out here. It's a, it's a 30 degree cutter. It's got an 8 thousandths nose radius on it so I can get really sharp corners on the primer modules. This is going to be the first tool that works. Then we're going to jump over here to this tool. This is the second tool in the game. 
This is a center drill. We're going to come in and drill out the center of the module. The third tool is a 73,000 drill bit and we're going to use this drill to drill all the way through and that's what allows the flame to pass through the primer module when it's completely finished. That's your flame path. This tool here, the little drill. We're going to jump over here to this boring bar and the boring bar is going to come in and bore a small taper on the inside of the primer module. That allows it to conform and fit in the breech plug and that's what gives me my 100% leak free seal in the ignition system. In the last process we're going to jump all the way back here to the back tool. This is tool number five in the system. It's a 42 thousandths wide cutoff tool and it's going to come in and part off that module but I've got it set up to where it doesn't part the module completely off because if it parted it completely off it's going to fall down into the chips or you have to set up some type of a basket to catch it and sometimes they'll fly upwards and bounce around you they'll fly out of the machine you don't really know where they're going to go they don't always just fall straight down so I've got it set up where it doesn't cut the module completely off but it cuts it so thin that it allows me to break it off real easy and set it aside for the next step. So what we're going to do now is we're going to back out a little bit and or actually I think I'll just zoom you in a little bit and we'll run our first module. Now I'm running these dry with no coolant and here goes cycle start. <sighs> Okay guys, that was the first module. So now I've got this little tool that I built. I'm going to zoom you back out. And we're going to run this again in a better view where you guys can see what's going on a little bit better. But I'm going to take this little tool here that I made. And it's machined out to where it fits that primer module. And I really don't need this tool to break it off. But after you break off four or five hundred of these a day or whatever you can make in a day, your fingers are going to get sore. Believe me, I know. You get cuts on your fingers and everything else. So you just stick this on the module and you break it right off. So now there is the module first operation. You can dump it out. I'm going to put it over here on the bench and we're going to make another one. So I'm going to back you up. i got to get some room to get in here to the machine to work. We're going to pull our handle to loosen the collet. We're going to slide our material out. We're going to get our part setter, slide it in, lock the handle down, and we're ready to push the cycle start button again and make another part. But I'm going to move the camera and I'm actually going to hold it by hand so that I can move it around and you guys can see what's going on in there a little better and we'll be right back as soon as I'm ready to do that. Okay guys, we're ready and I'm holding the camera by hand now so it could be a little shaky. We're going to push our cycle start button and the machine will start moving. We'll come right in here and get right on top of this thing so you guys can see.
guys, that is one more primer module ready to be broke off. So I'm going to put the camera back on my stand and we'll break that one off and move on to the next process. Okay guys, we're going to break this primer module off and put it on the bench. We're ready to make another primer module. And we'll do that till we get 15, 20, 25 primer modules made and set over here on the side of my lathe. It's just a little work table that comes on the lathe. You've got one of these on just about every machine I've ever seen. And it's a place to put some tools that you're using on that particular job or whatever you might need. But we're going to move on down here to my little workbench that I've got sitting next to the lathe. So let's move the camera. You can see this workbench I've got. It's a steel bench. I've got my barrel vise on. I've got a bunch of miscellaneous tools laying on the bench that I use on a regular basis. And it's right next to my machine. So I can grab these primer modules that I just made. And I can lay them on this bench. Now, what I've got here is a reloading press. I've got a breech plug mounted in an adapter and the breech plug is mounted in the press upside down. Now this is kind of a quality control check that I do with every single primer module that I make. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that it fits in the 4570 shell holder. So it fits in every single one. That's just a, a good quality control check to make sure that there's no wear on the tools. If you're um, if your turning tool wears a thousandth, then your part will get two thousandths big. That could cause it not to fit if you're really running tight tolerances. So the first thing we do is put it in the press. And I'm going to reposition the camera because I know you can't see what's going on here. Okay, you can see the primer module is in the ram of the, the press here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that all the way up into the breech plug. And what that does is it's going to guarantee me that that fits in that breech plug. Now I only have to do it one time, but I'm going to do every primer module. And I will do this while there's another module being made in the machine, and that kind of keeps me going. I'm making a primer module. I'm finishing the second operation to this side of the module. So you just put them in there. It's just like sizing a piece of brass. It just goes up into the breech plug. The breech plug is also tapered, so that is doing a finish form of the snout on my primer module here. Pretty simple little operation, doesn't take that long to do it, and we're good to go. So start with a pile, do them all, move on, keep them moving. Okay guys, that finishes up the operation on this side of the primer module when I get all of these ran all 96 bars of this brass when I get them all done I'll have to set this machine up and put these primer modules back in one more time so they all everyone has to be handled again and what we'll do then is we'll put them in with the primer end facing out and we're going to come in and machine off the face and bore the pocket for the primer to fit in there. I'll show you how we do that when we get all 96 bars finished and we'll go from there on the next operation. So in the meantime, I'll be making these primer modules. You guys stay tuned. Well, you don't have to stay tuned because I'm just going to add it to the end of this video. And I'll show you how we machine for the primer pockets and the quality control checks that we go through there um, I normally run coolant on these primer modules. I didn't in the video. That's why you see my coolant guards in place here on the machine. This is just um, a little piece of aluminum that I made to keep the coolant from splashing out on the floor. This is a chuck guard and then I'll just keep my door closed about that far. I don't want to open and close the door all the time. I've disengaged a few safety devices on the machine that uh, allows it to run with the door open probably shouldn't do that but i've never seen a machine that you could run with all the safety devices operating i should say so anyway guys we're going to 
get on out of here. I'll bring you back in when we turn these around for the second operation and show you how we do the primer pockets. Hello guys, welcome back to Hankins Custom Rifles. Today's December the 18th and we have finally finished those 96 bars of brass that we had and we are now turned around to the second operation. Now this is a box of modules and this is what they look like after they come off of the first operation. We've got the fronts are done and then the back side still needs to be put in the machine and I'm going to face off three thousandths of the total length to bring them to the correct length and then put a pocket in there for the primer module. And to do that we just pick one out of the box, we put it in the machine, push it all the way in, and I tighten my handle like you saw me do earlier in the video. So then we just push the cycle start. Now my collet, my collet is spring loaded so I can just take this cup and put it right here, pull my handle and it pops my module out into the cup and then I'll set it here on the table and I'll run another one. While this one is running, Okay, what I usually do is when the one part's running in the machine, I'm going to check the primer pocket on the part that just came out. I've got two gauge pins here. One of them is 204 and one of them is 205. The 204 pin fits in the primer hole. The 205 pin will not fit in the hole here. So that's my, my go and no-go gauge. The yellow tape is the go gauge, this is the no-go gauge. Um, my last batch of modules I made, I used a 203 pin, and a couple of guys said the modules were too tight and the primers were, they have having a hard time getting their primers in. So I opened up the hole a thousandth of an inch just to give them a little bit easier to put the primer in, but most primers are going to measure 209 to 211, and they're thin-walled, so they will conform to the shape of this primer pocket. So once we've checked them, we just toss them into the bucket. And then we grab another one and do it all over again. Then we just put the up right there and you can watch this primer module pop right out. I built me a little spring-loaded collet to make them a lot easier to get out so I just thought I'd bring you in. We finished up the video on how to make the primer modules and you guys see what we're doing there. They go through a very strict quality control check. Once in a while one will slip through that just didn't didn't meet the, the quality control but somehow it got past us but it's very rare and um, the headspace on these is the same as the last batch which is the same as the last batch and I check each one of them with a micrometer stand and uh, to make sure that they're correct so that's pretty much it guys on the primer module making video with the CNC lathe so subscribe to the YouTube channel give me a thumbs up on the videos and until next time we'll see you later